I think six months on from our chapter looking at EU democracy and human rights policy, the big news of recent months is that the European Endowment for Democracy is now up and running and it looks really promising. It's got more money than was originally allocated to it and I think it's made some really positive steps into establishing uh, a clear uh, niche and trying to find added value in amongst all the other EU instruments that already exist. This identity is based on supporting um, democratic activists that don't at the moment receive support, um, are struggling to find space for their own civic activity against some very repressive regimes around the world, and trying to ensure that all the new very promising uh, mobilization that we see through information communications technologies um, is translated into uh, efficient mainstream political activity. So I think there the signs look very promising, obviously challenges ahead, but I think things we can say do seem to have improved in the last six months. I think beyond the European Endowment for Democracy, uh, obviously um, there are countries that have presented new challenges over the last uh, six months. If we look at the Arab Spring situation, um, then in both Egypt and Tunisia, uh, the uh, incipient democratic transition seemed to be beset by even more complicated challenges than there were six months ago. And European governments, as other international actors, are really struggling to deal with these new obstacles to reform. We've seen a number of European uh, political foundations and civil society bodies uh, targeted by new repressive uh, measures from the Egyptian government. The process of drawing up the constitution in Tunisia apparently atrophied. Uh, and I think that all this denotes um, a set of broader challenges that European governments are now faced with. Their political will to help in these um, incipient democratic transitions does seem to be strong, but actually how to ensure that this translates into efficient help on the ground when the domestic political circumstances are now so fragmented is I think presenting European governments and uh, other democracy promoting institutions with some very acute difficulties. I think if we look beyond this uh, phase, one of the things we um, uh, drew out in our chapter six months ago was that so far the economic crisis doesn't seem to have completely uh, neutralised the EU's political will to support democracy and human rights, but over the medium term it does um, uh, uh, bring about a, um, a constriction of resources that are likely to be available uh, for this area of work. We're, we're going to see some of these restrictions uh, potentially kick in by the end of this year. And again, I think this behoves European governments and EU institutions to think afresh about how they can actually leverage um, uh, political change, how they can positively influence democratisation um, in a context where resources are uh, finite and more stretched, where there are other actors, other interna international actors involved that are not always committed to uh, positive political change uh, in the same way and where we can't rely as we have in the past on the, the kind of magnetic normative appeal of the EU's model to quite the same extent. I think European governments are beginning to make some headway in addressing these more qualitative challenges but I think um, a lot of progress still needs to be made.